Hello everyone, Alan here. How are you today? I hope you're okay. Um, thanks for coming to join me. I'm going to take you on a little trip today to the small city of Perth in Scotland. Once a year I meet up somewhere with my lovely friend Margaret and she lives on the Isle of Skye and we try and meet somewhere roughly halfway between there and Durham where I live. Although more often than not, I would say Margaret has a longer journey than me. You can see on the map that Perth is north of Edinburgh and southwest of Dundee. And I think Margaret's journey time on this occasion, uh, which was mostly on the train, was probably a couple of hours longer than mine. So on the Friday morning, I set off on a lovely sunny day on my train journey from Durham. The main reason that Margaret and I had picked Perth to meet up this time was that we'd found out that the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase was taking place and uh, we thought that would be a lovely thing to go to. It's just a, a very mini yarn festival and uh, the main Scottish yarn festival, which also takes place in Perth, uh, is in September. So maybe we'll have to go to that another time. Uh, anyway, it, it was it was just a good reason to go to Perth. Although, in fact, I'd, I kind of had in an impression that Perth wasn't an especially attractive or interesting place to go to. Just from, you know, when you just hear things that people say and um, it just gives you that impression. Uh, not that I really take notice of things like that. I, I like to go and make up my mind for myself and I was really glad that I hadn't taken any notice of those slightly negative impressions that I'd been given because well it was just lovely we had such a lovely weekend uh, every single person that we met whether it was in cafes or in the hotel that we were staying in or in the tourist information centre there was a really lovely man there uh, everybody was just really, really friendly and helpful and welcoming. So I can definitely recommend a visit to Perth. <laughs> uh, and OK, maybe when you come out of the station, if you arrive by train and you come out of the station, then the first streets that you come to do look a bit sort of... Um, I suppose in need of a, a lift, I would say. <laughs> but. You know, there's been a lot of imaginative regeneration in the city centre. Uh, and, you know, there are always interesting things to, to discover about the history of wherever you go. It, you, just, you just have to take the time to find out. Uh, for example, long ago, uh, the writer Sir Walter Scott in 1828 was inspired by a little house in Perth to write his story, The Fair Maid of Perth. And the house is now home to the Royal Scottish Geographical Society and it's run by volunteers, although unfortunately it wasn't open when we were there.
So I met up with Margaret at the railway station and our first port of call was a little cafe where we had some lunch and cups of tea. It was too early to check into our hotel, so we spent a very enjoyable time going into several charity shops. In one of them, I found a couple of the most delightful miniature plates depicting scenes from nursery rhymes. Later at the hotel, we did a bit of research on the plates. The artist was a man called Norman Meredith, an English artist born in Liverpool in 1909. He did some illustrations for Enid Blyton's stories. We found a couple more of the plates for sale on eBay and so I decided to buy them. So here they are and I think they're just absolutely beautiful. We were staying in the city centre in a Premier Inn and this one in Perth has made use of a large building that was once Puller's Dye Works from the late 1820s. The Puller family pioneered the first synthetic dyes and later, in the 1860s, they became the UK's first dry cleaning company. We were very pleased with our choice of hotel. We slept really well and we thoroughly enjoyed the breakfast buffet each morning. On our first evening, we had a delicious meal at Feezer's right next to the hotel and we could highly recommend it. The main event of our weekend was the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, held at a place called the Dewar Centre in Perth, which houses an ice rink, a cafe and several function rooms. The vendors were all from single yarn farms, and the idea of the showcase was just to shine a spotlight on some of the smaller Scottish yarn businesses. Despite the small size of the event, we had a lovely time, and still managed to spend a fair bit of money. I'll show you shortly what we bought. Hotel, we got out our purchases to have another look at what we'd bought. So here's what Margaret bought. A few balls of this new Lanark wool, which was Aaron weight to make a cardigan that she'd already got a pattern for. 
a lovely sock set in the colourway Stormy Weather, a 100 gram skein of a chunky Lamamure yarn and another four ply one, both from Shetland, and a skein of four ply mohair in a colour called Smoked Salmon, a pattern for a tea cosy plus the yarn, and a pattern for a pick and mix cowl, which actually Margaret's going to do as a scarf with a selection of beautiful colours. I was rather drawn to the project bags made of Harris Tweed and chose this one to come home with me and I bought a pattern for some fingerless mitts with the yarn and I chose the colours for the yarn a pattern for a mouse called Harold Fatmus and the yarn to go with that and then a third pattern which actually um, I'm going to give as a gift with the yarn for this lovely owl. That evening we had a tasty meal at the Bothy Bistro another place would be happy to return to and we paused to watch a fascinating video projection onto a couple of brick walls by the Mill Street car park of waterfalls and rivers. What a lovely idea to have this unexpected piece of art to look at when darkness has fallen. We set out on the Sunday morning into bright sunshine, heading for a walk that had been suggested to us by the man in tourist information. We walked down to the River Tay to begin our walk, which was going to take us along the west bank of the river as far as the railway bridge that's combined with a footbridge and which actually goes across two channels of the river and across a small island called Moncrief Island. We would then be walking along the east bank through a couple of parks and then back to Perth Bridge which is also called Smeaton's Bridge. So it was a lovely walk and we were happy to find a little cafe right by the bridge uh, where we had tea and some delicious lemon scones and we then went off to visit the art gallery. The gallery building was constructed in 1824 and it houses one of the oldest public collections in the UK which was collected by the Literary and Antiquarian Society of Perth. It's a lovely building inside too, and I just loved the pink walls in the entrance to the exhibitions. It reminded me of the lining of the Harris Tweed bag that I bought the day before. 
There was an excellent collection of work by modern Scottish artists with extra interest provided by some thought-provoking words written by teenagers in a local school who'd been asked to write down their responses to some of the paintings. Some of these descriptions were outstanding and really added to our appreciation of the paintings. One of our favourites was this one about a painting called Jock and the Tiger Cat uh, that was painted by John Byrne in 1968. Jock is a very sheltered little boy. His dad had a troubled childhood and he is trying to protect Jock and keep him as a child as long as possible so he doesn't have to deal with the hard life of adolescence. He is obviously getting too big for this room and has definitely grown out of his childhood toys. The room is in quite a bad shape with the wallpaper peeling off and the roof is leaking a little bit. His face is very distressing, like a young man, whilst his body is the shape of a young toddler, more on the chubby side. He looks like he is very trapped in his body and in this room. I rather like this painting by John Maxwell, painted in 1951, and the lovely response of the school pupil. I think this painting is the story of a bird whose wings are made from flowers and small trees. They are small birds and they fly all across the sky. When they fly, the trees and flowers light up with pearls. Sometimes they fly off. If you happen to see one, you will have good luck through your whole life. But they only come out in the early morning in the summer. A newly opened exhibition features the artist J.D. Ferguson and his creative partner Margaret Morris, and they were otherwise known as Fergus and Meg, and they met in Paris in 1913. The paintings themselves were a fascinating variety of subjects and styles, but I was especially taken with Margaret Morris, who'd founded the School of Celtic Dance, a more free-form version of classical ballet, and often performed in natural outdoor settings. The video clips of some of the dancers are just adorable, uh, though apologies for the slightly odd lighting effects. However, I have to say that perhaps the highlight of the visit to the art gallery was the ladies' toilets. Oh my goodness, I have never been in toilets quite like those. Our final treat of the weekend was a visit to the Fine Art Deco Cinema, built in 1933, uh, but which has been refurbished inside and is an IMAX cinema. We saw the film Wicked Little Letters, starring Olivia Colman, Timothy Spall and others, and we thought it was absolutely brilliant. On our final morning, we had a little time to spare before we needed to be back at the station, and to pass the time and shelter from the rain, we found a wonderful little tea room with an amazing interior decor and beautiful crockery. 
The glass tops to the tables protected postcards of scenes of old Perth, and the walls were covered in framed, mostly 19th century paintings. Our tea and scones went down very well, and I just loved pouring my tea from the silver teapot. At the station, we waited for our trains, which were due to leave at almost the same time. We said our farewells as we boarded the trains and soon headed off in opposite directions, Margaret going north and me going south. So it really was an absolutely super weekend. We had such a nice time and I can highly recommend Perth as a place to go and visit. Uh, I'd really like to go back because actually the museum, I showed you a picture of the museum and that was closed because it's uh, it's just newly being housed in that building and it wasn't going to be open until just a few days after we'd been there. So anyway, good reason to go back. So I'm going to leave you there for this week and just uh, wish you a lovely week ahead and to take good care of yourself and keep nice and busy doing all the things you like to do. Okay then, see you soon. Bye!